I'm Maureen Durdak, and the name of my show at Gross McCleave Gallery is Burning Worlds. The title of the show takes its name from the main series in the exhibit entitled Ardens Mundi, Latin for Burning Worlds. It refers to the transmutational power of burning in the spiritual as well as the material sense. This exhibit features the results of my long study and work in the Himalayan country of Nepal, a country and region where the conversation between spirit and matter is of long and particular intensity and of special relevance to our rapidly heating planet. Ardens Bundi incorporates my synthesis of repoussé metalwork and contemporary painting. My new material contribution to the visual arts for which I received the 2011 Fulbright Senior Scholar Award in Art in Nepal. It manifests the unique living history, relationship and dialogue between two artistic traditions and practices, contemporary painting, and the endangered metalworking practice of repoussé as it is practiced today in the Kathmandu Valley of Nepal, the present epicenter of this ancient practice. Ardens Mundi is my developing series addressing the most urgent issue of our time, catastrophic climate change. The series envisions a sublime processional portrait of a planet in violent turmoil, each burning world presenting an apocalyptic face of global warming. I envision the series as an environmental Stations of the Cross, with each world presenting a face of our collective crucifixion of our planet. Each work is four feet in diameter, and four works have been completed to date. Three feature in this exhibition. Inferno, the blackened furioso of firestorms. Desico, the desiccation of drought. and Tempestatis, the explosive force of superstorms. Ardens Mundi is both homage to cultural preservation and a fervent appeal for planetary survival. Opposite is the Cantos Helios Triptych, an homage to solar power, which speaks to humanity's current engagement with the promise and the peril of the sun's power. The triptych embodies the diurnal arc of the sun, its rise, zenith, and descent over the earth, whose energies are magnified through gilded copper repoussé bursts, derived from the surging parallel registers of the cantos, themselves expressed through asemic writing. Two other series in this exhibition are closely related. The Inner Perceiver and Atman series, and they support the meditative field of this exhibition. These series both draw upon Western and Asian conceptions to represent the release of the soul from the material world here represented by the undulating forms of the paint registers derived from the forms of the sagittal sutures of the human cranium, from which in Tibetan and Hindu thought, the soul is thought to emerge at the time of death. Finally, two small works complete the exhibition. Prayer for Khalid al-Assad is an intimate homage to the great Iraqi curator beheaded by ISIS for his courageous defense of the World Heritage Site of Palmyra in Syria in 2015. This work is a small study for a larger planned future work. And Oracle an enigmatic work which speaks to the inchoate apprehension of the unknowable. My hybrid process is lengthy and technically demanding. Each work in Ardens Mundi requires an average of four months to complete. 
It begins with the first level of painting on archival wood panels, repetitive layering and abrading, followed by the working of the copper elements. I work with a special suite of tools handmade for me by Master Rabindra Sakya, which includes an anvil, anvil heads, double-headed hammers and chisels, all of iron. The repoussé process begins with cutting designs from a heavy copper sheet. The copper is worked with double-faced hammers and chasing tools, interspersed with frequent bouts of fire annealing with a heavy blowtorch, followed by acid baths to clean the metal. Selective chasing follows and the final forms are sealed and affixed to the initial foundational level of painting. This is followed by the final level of painting in which a full range of mineral and stone aggregates and acrylic matrices are enlisted. Building an increasingly complex structure of heavy layering and scraping, painting is merged with the copper forms to elicit a dynamic fusion of materials. From the boldest masses of paint and stone to the finest mineral threads, laid down one millimeter at a time, the final accretion of materials evoke the violent intensity of primordial elements and energies as they rampage across the planet. I want the viewer to become drawn into the materiality of existence, to feel both its power and its fragility. I want the works to draw them in through an experience and exploration of complex surfaces, the weight of metal, the granulations of crushed stones and minerals, abraded paint surfaces, and the complex range of materials and treatments that range from the brutal to the ethereal. and through this material immersion, to invite their minds to consider the forces they represent and their relationship with the wonderment of the earth and her processes and of our collective responsibilities for her current state. Repoussé is an ancient practice, yet due to its technical demands worldwide, its practitioners remain few. The family of my colleague and teacher, Master Rabindra Sakya, is an illustrious one, with a celebrated lineage dating back to 1564. This Newar Buddhist family created many of the region's greatest historic monuments. Paradoxically, this family's legacy and practice are now threatened by two interlocking threats, globalization and climate change. Due to the difficulty of repoussé practice, the number of artisans is rapidly dwindling. And as the Himalayas are the third fastest site of global warming, the increasing acceleration of climate change is severely destabilizing both Nepal's delicate ecosystems and its cultural traditions. While working, I continually reflect upon this moment of humanity's greatest challenge. In my synthesis, material dichotomies are harmonized, assuming properties formally relegated to the other. Paint ossifies. Copper becomes stronger yet brittle under the blows of the hammer. Fire renews its malleability, rendering it akin to skin with all its associated vulnerabilities. Yet paradoxically renders it supple and capable of taking on new expanding forms. Likewise, in its resistance to change, humanity diminishes its potential for adaptation and expansion. Yet with humanity's acceptance of painful change, strength and renewal will follow, birthing new and finer possibilities for our collective future. I want to thank Gross McLeaf Gallery Director Rebecca Siegel for the opportunity in showing in her beautiful galleries and her vision, dedication, and generous support in recognizing the importance of my work. <laughs>